Hi, good morning, and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, <coughs> excuse me, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning um, and uh, at 10 a.m. Central Time, but and the show is recorded for anyone who is not able to join us on Wednesdays, so you can watch it later at your convenience. Uh, both, and I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can access your, all of our archives. Uh, both the live show and the recordings are free and open to for anyone to watch, so please do share. Uh, spread the word about our show. We'd love to have all sorts of people come on and join us. Uh, for those of you not from Nebraska, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries, so similar to your state library. So we provide services and programs um, to all sorts of libraries in the state. So you will find shows on Encompass Live for all types of libraries, public, academic, K-12, corrections, museums, archives. Um, et cetera, et cetera. Really our only criteria, it's something to do with libraries. Uh, we do book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, uh, demos of services and products, all sorts of things. Uh, we bring guest speakers from around the country sometimes to do presentations for us, but we also have Nebraska Library Commission staff that come on and do shows. And that's what we have today. Today is the last Wednesday of the month which means August is almost over, sad. <laughs> Where did it go? <laughs> Depends on whether you like your summer or you're looking forward to fall. But anyway, <laughs> it's the last Wednesday of the month and that means it is Pretty Sweet Tech Day. Uh, um, last Wednesday every month, uh, Amanda Sweet, our technology innovation librarian here at the Nebraska Library Commission comes on and talks to us about something techy. Good morning, Amanda. Good morning. Yeah, and today we are going to learn WordPress. Sweet. Some of WordPress. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of WordPress. There is a lot yeah. to WordPress. Uh, we use it here at the Library Commission. Uh, I know lots of libraries do use it. And so I'm just going to hand it over to you, Amanda, and tell us all about how to um, work on our WordPress layouts. Cool. So when I do WordPress trainings, I found out that most people, they pretty much like the themes. They like to, that's their starting point for to get started. Mm -hmm. But then you want to start getting more customization and doing your own thing with it as you get comfortable. So this WordPress demonstration is going to be about starting completely from the blank page. You're, we're going to have, have absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. And I'll be showing you how to do different things like building out this custom header we'll use canva we'll learn how to do some different images like um we'll go into canva and i'll show you how to get the right sizing and how to get it so it's not horrifically pixelated i'll show you how to do this little shape divider here so that you have the color blocking that kind of flows from block to block and you can kind of start replicating this across the page and I'll also show you how to do these little card layouts on here so that even when you change the size of the screen, it'll start getting responsive. Mm. And I'll show you how to also customize those breakpoints so that if your screen looks a little bit wonky when you resize it, mm. you can adjust it and fix it. And that way, when you're viewing across different devices, it just doesn't look all messed up. Mm -hmm. That's something I think that whole, what does it look in everything is really hard to to do and also to be able to test in all sorts of different places. Yeah. And if you kind of know there's something you've done behind the scenes already that should account for all of that, it makes things a lot easier. Right. And also I'll show you how to put these little buttons together because these buttons you can find like, they are everywhere. And, okay, so let me pop back in here. So now again, we are going from complete blank slate. So I'm going to add a new page just from scratch. And excuse me if my WordPress is taking just a hot a second to load everything, but we'll get there. And I'm just gonna call this test page because I'm going to delete it later and all you have to do is give it that title 
and I installed a plugin that's called Element or Elementor. Elementor has a free version and a pro version. I'm using the free version here, and you can also customize it with in a million different ways. But if you don't already have Elementor on your installation, you can go just to your standard plugin, search Elementor, and get it loaded in there. If you are in Nebraska Libraries on the web library, Elementor is already included in the installation, so you don't have to worry about it. And once Elementor eventually loads here, we'll start, I can give you a quick overview of what that layout looks like and how the block system in Elementor works versus what it looks like traditionally in like the Gutenberg editor, which, which, which is what you're probably used to in WordPress. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is you'll notice that in this version, it actually took up the whole section. Mm -hmm. So the first thing that I usually do when I start from a blank page is I decide whether I actually want this sidebar to show up. And in this case, I don't. I actually want it to, we're going to be making a test home page. So I'm going to get rid of this and I'm also going to make it so that this test page doesn't display. So I'm going to go down into this little, there's a little gear icon of settings in the bottom left hand corner. I'll click on that and I'm going to click on hide title. So now this is gone and that just, you know. So now this will still look right on the top of the page. It'll still, it still has that HTML to be able to pull from and it'll tell people what page they're on. It just won't look fugly and it won't show up there. And then in the page layout, we're going to go to one column, no sidebar. And wait for it to load. And once it loads, that little sidebar will be gone. There we go. So now I'm going to click on this plus sign. So this is how our the block editor and Elementor works. The two options you have here are a plus sign to start choosing out your layout. And you can do a, right now we're going to do a one column layout. I'll give you, a, I'll run through most of these just to show you what they look like. But I'm going to hit the plus sign on here. And when you hit this like semi grayed out plus sign, then you'll get your block options that you can actually use inside of your, um, layout. So the first thing I usually try is the image block. And you'll see that uh, by default, this image doesn't actually completely take up the full width. So the first thing I do is, for whatever weird reason, the first block on the screen, you can never actually see this little menu up here. But there's actually a little menu, like a hidden menu that's up here. If you click this little three dots that's in the middle, you'll get some secondary settings. So I usually change it from boxed setting to full width setting, and that's going to stretch it out so that it'll actually line up with your little header image. So that's why this actually lines up here. If it's boxed, it'll actually be indented just a, probably about a quarter inch on each side and it just looks weird. The world won't end, but it just looks weird. Yeah, a lot of this is just like, you know, um making things look neat and 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 yeah. like like they pay attention to each other. <laughs> right? Just a lot of chaos in there, yeah. <laughs> and if you have like layout OCD, you will yeah. love that feature. There's that too, yes. <laughs> So now the way that you actually get this to be the rights to be like the image that you want, we're going to go into Canva. So Canva actually has like a whole lot of different layouts that actually work incredibly well for the web. You just need to know where to look for them. So if you go to and search for banner, if you find a, an email header banner, a LinkedIn banner, or set a custom size banner, it's usually about the right size for that top header. Um, but 
the thing that you will run into if you choose certain size banners is that it might stretch and pixelate. So I'm just going to choose this top one and I'm going to click on this resize button. So this resize button, if you have the free version, it's not going to actually let you resize it from here. But I'm going to, but all I want to know is what size is it? So because this is actually already massive, we can use a massive layout and we can shrink it down. We just can't use a smaller layout and stretch it out because going from small to big is what pixelates and makes your eyes unfocused when you start looking at an image. So I'm just gonna put in whatever weird random text and I'm going to say test page and delete me please. Then we'll get rid of this because we don't need it. We're just doing a test. I'll shrink her down so that this doesn't look horribly huge. Then I'm going to get rid of this image, go into this little button that says Pixabay. I'm going to clear out this, wipe out this, wipe out this. And all I'm doing is clicking on a shape on here and hitting the delete key on my keyboard. Click a shape, delete key, click a shape, delete key, click a shape, delete key. And now all I'm going to do is grab one of these images and drag it over. Pretty. Okay. <laughs> that, that's why you see all these amazing little photos, but when you actually see it put together, you're like, oh, the magic is gone. <laughs> you, know? you pulled away the curtain. Right? <laughs> so now we'll send this and move this back up here. I'm not gonna worry too much about what this looks like aesthetically, just because it's a test, you just get the idea. So now once this actually looks the way that you want it to look, I'm gonna go into this upper right hand corner where it says share, I'll go to download. And then I wanna keep this as a PNG and I can't actually change the size cause we don't, I'm not using the paid version on here, but I'm going to download it. The commission actually does have the paid version of this, but I wanted to show you that using only the free features just because I heard that's the one most people use. Mm -hmm. And if that's what you have, then yeah. Yeah. Until you have so access. Now, yeah. So now this will get mine is set up to go straight to the download folder. So I'm going to go back into Elementor. I'll click on this image that I just set up. Now I'm going to, when I click on it, you'll see this little menu pop open on the left-hand side. I'm gonna click on the choose image here. Then this is just like loading in any other file. You click in upload file, grab the new one that you just pulled in, which is randomly called dark blue modern discount banner, but okay. <laughs> And then once this loads in, you'll see on the bottom right hand corner, it'll say insert media. Eventually this button will actually be not grayed out, which means that it's loaded and ready to go. So I'm just waiting for this insert media to not be grayed out anymore. There we go. So now you can see this image is popping in here and I'm going to go to the image size and go to full so that it actually is taking up that whole space. And you can, there are also some additional options on here. You can send this image over to link to, like if you're, send, if you're inserting an ad for an event that's coming up, you can also link this image over to like the sign up form or registration form for the event or like a page with additional information about the event, you get the idea. You're linking an image to a website. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so now we want to add more stuff underneath this. So I'll give you the example of how do you do this? So this is just a, this is a three column layout. And I'm going to show you how to do this little icon top with a little header 
the description and kind of a little button on this on the underside here. And then I'll show you how to flood this background with color blocking to make distinct sections. And I'm gonna pop this over on my side just so I remember what I just told you. And I'm going to go into the plus sign here and I'm going to choose this three column layout here. And I want to go back into the, now you can see this full little menu. This is actually what I clicked on before. When you hover over it, it'll say edit section. And that's where you can change it from boxed to full width. And then you'll just see these little edge signs stretched out to mesh with this side here. And now I'm going to click on this little plus sign in the box on the left-hand side here. And we're going to grab that first little section. And what I want to do is I'm going to search for the word icon and you're looking for something called icon box. So this is one of the most common things that you'll see on the web, which is, and they've just made it stupid easy to do it through Elementor. So I'll click on this little star symbol. We're gonna change it to something cool. So Elementor actually uses something called Font Awesome. Font Awesome is a collection of preset icons that you can just grab and go from. So if you were asking people to wake up in the morning, you can grab a little sun. And then you can, if you don't like that blue color, you can click on this style up here, go to primary color, and then change it over to whatever you want. I was aiming for yellow, that didn't happen. And so this is just kind of close enough there. And I want that heading to be the exact same color. So I'm going to copy this little hex code here. That's a little six digit, um, it's the number that says what, it tells the computer what color you want it to be. Mm -hmm. So I just copied that and I'm gonna go into content now. And the content is what will change this header and the this font color down here. So I'm gonna go to this color here and paste it and now it's the same color. And now we go into the description section because I want this to be a little bit darker of a gray. And I'm just gonna do you there. And, and now, better. right? Just that above picture, yeah. Some of the littlest things, yeah. <laughs> right. And so the other question is, Amanda, how do you choose what colors you're going to use? I can't match to save my life. Neither can I. I'm not so, a great designer. I have no clue. Oh God, if it weren't for this website, I don't think I could ever, I sometimes match my clothes with this website. It's a <laughs> problem. <laughs> And that's what's great about this, the things that you're showing here, and I just mentioned, you know, I'm not a graphic designer, I do not have the training, and a lot of us in libraries are not. It's not right. yeah. taught in, in library school at all. And using um, Canva and um, this colors website, it can it can make you, you can pretend you yeah. might be <laughs> right. yeah. that looks good together and doesn't clash and, right. and looks professional. Yeah. I like it. So this is when it when this coolers first loads, just click on start the generator. And what I usually do if I ha if I don't have a baseline color that I actually need to use, mm -hmm. I will hit the spacebar key on my keyboard until I find one color that I like. So if I like this blue, I'll lock it into place by hitting this little lock icon and mm -hmm. then I'll hit the spacebar to refresh until I find more colors that I like. And it will bring up ones that only go with that one right. that you like. Yeah. And you can also drag these around. There's a little left and right arrow. So if you wanna know what this would look like in order, 
you can also pull that over and then you'll hit the space bar again until you find something, a combination that you really like. And so I'll lock that in and I'm just gonna use these as, okay. So, and the other thing that I wanna point out on here is if you look at the colors on here, you'll see that sometimes this will be printed in white font and sometimes this will be printed in black font. So this is actually surprisingly important for when you're doing a layout mm -hmm. and it's because of readability. Yeah. So Coolers is designed to automatically change the color of the font based on what background color is most readable against it. Nice. So that's why I started, I do this, this is something I do automatically now, but I realized, hey, I should probably tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but so I, you'll see that I started automatically choosing colors that have the same contrast. So I don't want to actually pair this one with a, this black font with a white font because then it's not going to look right. And as it is with choosing these colors, I already have to go back into that Elementor and change the header font color and that icon font color to a lighter white color so that you can actually read it against it. So let me show you what that looks like. I'll use this glaring blue just because it'll be easier to see it. So I'm going to go to this little copy here. There's a little copy hex. I'll click it and now that color will automatically copy. I'm gonna go back into Elementor. And now when you hover over this little section that you're working with, you're looking for this little gray section where it says edit column. So when you use edit column, this is going to flood the entire background. If you only, if you click on this little button here where it says edit icon box, you'll have a little thin sliver of white on the outside where it doesn't change. So I hit the edit column and now I'm going to go into style and I want background type and it'll look like a little, a little paintbrush when you hover over it, it says classic. You'll click on this little color that has like a little slash through it. And this is where you're going to paste in your color. So now you can start seeing how that contrast works because I had, I mean, this is a bad example because I forgot I had changed it orange. It's a really already contrasting color. But let me show you what it looks like from the default. So I click back in here and I'm going to go into here. If I had actually had it as the traditional black and I'll go into 10, 10, 10. So you can see that you can read it, but it's easier if you have it as white. Huge difference, yeah. yeah. So that's why I always pay attention to this contrast in coolers. If you do that one small thing when you're choosing colors and cooler, it'll save you a lot of time. Yeah. And so now while I'm in here, I'm just gonna change everything over to um, white or white-ish. Um, one little random thing that you may and may not have known about graphic design for websites, it's that most websites don't use pure white and they don't use pure black. They actually use a hair off of it <clears throat> just because of the way that it renders across different screens. Hmm. I'm sure there's other reasons, but you know. Mm -hmm. So now you kind of know kind of a better way to start formatting and fix and like setting this up. So the other thing that you can do is when you already have this all set up the way that you want to go, you can go to this edit icon box 
and you're going to right click it and duplicate. So it'll automatically go over to right below it, which is not what you want to do. So I'm going to hit the control Z, I'll right click and copy. And then I'll click into this new space. And now I'm going to go into right click and paste. So now this exact formatting just clicked over to here. And you can see that you can barely even see the part where it says this is the heading and the little star. And that is why we choose color contrasting. So I'll show you what happens when I go in here and I'm going to grab this green color. So I'll go back into the coolers. I hit copy hex, grab the green. And now I'm going to click on this little edit column in this new section. I'll go into style, go to background type. We'll click that little paintbrush looking thing that says classic. Then I'll hit the little the color palette square that has a little slash through it. Now I'm going to backspace over what was in here, put that in, and now you can actually see what that looks like. And then I'm going to right click on this last little cube. We'll do a paste. So now our little text is back in here. And now I'm just going to grab this last little color over here, copy. I just grabbed pink because it was there. And who doesn't like pink? I'm wearing pink pants right now. <laughs> then I'm going to go back into that edit column. We're going to do the exact same thing again. Go to style, go to the background type, hit that little paintbrush that says classic. Go to this little color swatch that has the little slash through it. Then paste it there. And you can also go back through here change your icons to whatever you happen to want. Whatever might be appropriate. And change your heading, change your text. To do that, all you have to do is click into this little box. If you click on the text, you'll look to the left, and this is where you'll actually type in your text. Yeah. And if you do wind up clicking over on this side and try to type in here, Sometimes it'll accidentally work. More often than not, it won't. <laughs> accidentally does what you want, it, what you think it should do. <laughs> right? Let's see if it'll, there we go, you know. But it's designed so that you actually type everything into this left-hand side instead of the right. But again, world won't end if you accidentally type it over here. It wouldn't be the first time I did it. Right, so now I'm going to go back into this edit section up here and I'm going to go to this columns gap. So the columns gap, I'm going to switch it to no gap and I'll also shift this one up here. I'll click on that little three dot and then go to no gap. And that is actually how you get the blocks to blend together. Mm. So that columns gap is what provides automatic spacing between each of the little new different block systems on here. And so that is actually how I got it to look like that, so that it actually all smears together. Mm -hmm. So then the next thing I'll show you is how to do a layout like this, where it has those little cards but it doesn't have the flooded background. It just has like that smaller background and has some spacing in between. And I'll use a more contrasting color than that gray just so it's easier to see. And I'm also going to choose a contrast color like this just so I have fewer steps for changing the color of the font. Um, traditionally in a layout, you would actually use a similar contrast. So if you choose to use a white font on a dark background, it's better to actually choose an entire web layout that looks like that. Because if you try it with a mix and match, um, unless you do it really 
focused and in the right way, when the user opens up that website, their eyes will focus in and out. So your eye, like your eye focuses one way to see light color on a dark background, and then it focuses another way to see dark on light. So it's possible, but I recommend if you're just starting out, choose one or the other. Did that make sense the way I said that? The best way to, yeah. To, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. It's why your eyes wig out when you see, when you go from light to dark. Mm -hmm. And so now we're gonna add in another little three columnar here and we'll do that. So I'm going to add in this little plus sign. We're going to grab our three columns and I'm going to grab, I'll go to this little edit section up here. We're going to go from boxed to full width. Then I'm going to go over to no gap. I'll hit the plus sign here. And now we're going to go into, I'll use the same icon box. And I'm just going to drag and drop this icon box into the section that we want it to live. And now I'm going to go back into the style so that we can actually see what this color looks like. And let's use, I'll use that darker color. And I'm going to go into content heading and and then I'll change that last one to there. So now instead of going into Um, so before we went into this edit column box, and that is what flooded the entire column. Now we're going into this little edit box here, right click and go to edit icon box. And then when you go into the style, and so now you'll see that this is actually laid out a little bit differently. So we're going to go into advanced and background and that's going to be where our background color lives here so i'm going to go into coolers i'm going to grab this little random orange and we'll go to classic click on this little slash thing backspace that out and so this is what it looks like when you have it as a um, the white next to the dark. So it just doesn't, it works, but it just doesn't look quite there. Mm -hmm. And so now you'll see that again, this flooded. So we're gonna do the control Z to undo it. Huh, well, that was interesting. We're just going to reset. Apparently, Control Z doesn't work on that one. That's mm. interesting. And I'm going to close this out. So we'll go back into background, go in here. Well, there's another way we can do it. So I'm going to show you a different method of putting that together in the same way. So I'm going to go back into style and we'll go into there. It was an advanced. So the advanced and padding. So this padding is going to be what adds space on all sides here. Mm. And now we're also going to add a margin. Yeah. Uh -huh. So this is another way that we can add space 
just because that other setting doesn't seem to be working right now. That's good. Uh, um, it's interesting that you mentioned because uh, that was something that someone was wondering about those. Um, someone asked about those icons on the top and the the like, blue, green, and pink. They're really they're they're right up close. Yeah. To yeah. Like, is there a way to make that not? It looks like they're kind of. Oh yeah. Padding. Yeah, actually. So and, we can do that on those as well using that same. Oh yeah, the advanced and if you add. Yeah. 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 Yes, I need one. Yeah. And this only takes like 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. Um, just because I have graphic design OCD, I'm going to just do another last one. <laughs> now I have to, yes. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So now the other thing is how do you get those little rounded edges on the side? We're going to go into border and border radius. And then when you go to, I usually do between like eight and 15. That's what rounded out, what, that is what rounds it out on the bottom. Okay, so now I'm going to show you the difference between, there's a weird, weird, weird technicality in how this works. So I'm going to hit this little plus sign here, and I'm going to go into button, and I'll go to, I'll drag a button over here. So if I drag a button down here, it actually shows up by default right underneath the this section. Mm -hmm. I'm going to drag another button here. So you'll see that when I dragged it over here, this background color didn't flood. It didn't hmm. go behind the button here too. And it's because of the way that setting worked. Hmm. So on this one, you use the edit column on the left. So it actually by default floods whatever gets plopped into that column. But when you use this other setting where it's just you're you were only editing the icon box, you're just flooding the icon box with color and anything else that you put into that column is it won't so be affected. Right. It's its yeah. own thing. Mm -hmm. hmm. So that is so if you do want to be able to put a button in there that looks like it actually meshes in together with that column you'll want to use this setting over here. Otherwise, you're in for a world of hurt. And then you can still add in, go to the advanced and add your padding in to the button so it doesn't look weird. And you can also mimic this exact same setting. So if you don't want this to be flooded like next to each other, you can go back up into this edit column and you can do the exact same thing we did over here. Go to the advanced, add a margin, and you can replicate. And then you can go into the style and go to border and go to border radius. So you'll see that you will, looking at these two little, these two different blocks, my brain goes wonky when I look at it, and yours probably will too. And it's because whoever put together Elementor didn't put the settings in the same places. <laughs> so, so you'll see that border radius is in, so the border radius for this one is in the advanced section, but the border radius for this one is in the style section. So basically my rule of thumb is to start by looking in style. If the setting you're looking for isn't in style, go to advanced and it's probably over there. Somewhere, yeah. Yeah. And this, I think this is good that you went through this and like, like the thing we you thought it would do the control Z, but it didn't, I thought, was that what it was? Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. somewhere, you know, don't be afraid to look somewhere else for something you might want to do. Click on something. You're not going to break it. Um, and you can always undo anything you've done. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. So, you know, just, you know, look in the other areas. There's very different, various, various places you can find ways to do different things. And right. Don't be afraid of it. Yeah. And there's always a different way to mimic a style. At least, uh, like when you start learning about it and figuring it out and good times. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to click back up here. So now I'll also show you how to do that shape border. And I'm going to get rid of this just because well, I'll keep it just in case we need to go back to it later. I'll click on this little plus sign here. We're going to add a new block. So we're going to use this one that goes straight across. And I'll click on this little plus sign in the center of our new block. And now I'm going to go over to a spacer. So here is a spacer. So a spacer actually is just completely empty air. It's dead air. And it'll show you how high this is actually set to be. It's about 50 pixels high. We're going to bump that up to about, uh, we'll go about 100. And I'm going to change this. I'll go to the this little edit button, the edit section button. And I'm going to go from boxed over to full width in the con in the content width section. And then I'll go back into the no gap so that it smushes right up. And then I'm going to go click back into this section, go into advanced. It will feel like you are clicking on dead air because, I mean, you kind of are. And so this is going to be one of those moments where you're going to wind up bouncing across two different sections to be able to get this to look the way that you want it to look. So the first thing you want to do is change the background color of your dead air. So we're going to go to background, background type, click your little classic button for your color. Then I'm going to grab this green color here just because we're going to use two heavily contrasting colors. I will paste it in here. And now we're going to go click back onto this little edit section here. And you're going to go into advanced. Oh, style, I lied. Hmm. And we're going to go to shape divider and type. So I'm going to just choose any random one. We'll go with clouds. And I'm going to change the height of it so you can actually see it. Mm. And I'll go into there. Ooh. Fancy. So now you can start to see what this will look like. Oh, do you know what I did? I clicked on the wrong area. And I'm going to choose shape divider bottom and waves brush. <clears throat> that is not behaving the way it is supposed to. So when in doubt, do it again. Yeah. So I'm going to go back into this edit section. We'll go back into the full width. And I'm going to go into the advanced style. There we go. Now it's going. 
Yeah, yeah, I can see it. Yep. Yeah. So this is actually how I got this to look like this little wave pattern here that goes in between sections. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is how I got it to look like that. And I'll go to one here. So when you look at this little section here, um, you would set your background color of this top section to that blue, the background color of this bottom section to be yellow, and then your shape divider, the background color of your little empty air is going to be this bottom section, and the color of your shape divider will be that top blue section. And they kind and, of merge into yeah, each other and yeah. into that transition yep. from one to another. Very slick. And it's shiny. <laughs> and so these, you pretty much already know how to do them. But one thing I will show you is kind of a cheat cheat trick if you're doing multiple rows of these at one time. And it will save you a lot of time. So let's just assume that this is actually looking the way that you had wanted it to look. It clearly isn't, but we'll just assume that it is. And so instead of going, instead of clicking on this edit section, I'm going to right click on it and you can go to duplicate and it will exact duplicate that right underneath it so that you can do multiple rows and multiple whatever. And it's way easier to set it up, configure it, and do what you need to do. And you can even go back through and start. Just because you duplicated it doesn't mean that you can't change it. Mm. So you can also still, you can change it to the fugliest shade of neon green you want to. <laughs> That's a good and, way to get started to, you know, duplicate that right off to start with. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just a cheat sheet that makes life easier. Mm -hmm. And just because I do indeed have style OCD, I'm changing this button color to the uh, white. And then the font color over to black. And there it is. So the all the other reason I wanted to go in here was to show that show you that you can also change your um, font type. So you can go into this in most areas that there is text. You can go into the style and change your typography. So if you remember, I so I said that I would show you how to make it so that headings and paragraphs looked right when you were changing the font size. So in the early days of writing websites, um, they only used PX, the pixels, but they added in EM. So EM actually changes your font based on the size of your screen. So the default is one EM if you want it to look like everything else that's on your page. But if you want it to be slightly smaller or slightly larger, you can go into like 1.3 or 4. And I'll also change this so that you can actually see the color of the text on here. And I will go into color and text color. And I'll go to like black and then i'll go back into so we change this i'm going to show you what this looks like in a heading i'll click on this heading and now i'm going to go into style content and typography basically click around until you find the word typography click on the little edit pen and then switch this from pixels over to EM. And then we'll go into
Does that look like it's changing at all? I don't think so. Hmm. No. And so I'm going to go back into typography. We'll try this again. So there's two reasons this could be happening. When you try to change a setting and it doesn't look like it's doing anything at all, it's either because WordPress is glitching out in some way, shape, or form, and it'll work next time you load it and open it, or two, if you've written some overriding CSS that's taking effect before this goes into effect, your custom CSS will sometimes override anything that you try to do in your website. Ah. Um, I have a tendency of doing custom CSS, so there is a possibility that this, that's happening. If you are a beginner in WordPress um, and you have never touched the CSS, it's probably WordPress. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't be, yeah, that would not be yeah. possible. You wouldn't have yeah. done that, yeah. And so I'm going to go in here. And so apparently, since that setting is not working in that area, I am going to delete this. We'll add this. Go to add in a new block. I'm going to grab a heading. And I'm going to just type in any random thing. And now I'm going to go back into change this to a more contrasting color so that it's easier for you guys to see. We'll go over to that there. And now I'm going to go back into style. And as I said, look for the word typography wherever it may land click on that little edit button, click on the EM, and by default, one should make it not really change at all. But when you go up past one is what should make it look a little bit larger. And now I'm going to go into change this to a full width just because by default, if you choose a full width layout, make everything full width. And then you can go over into this responsive mode here. And it'll be an icon in the bottom left hand corner of your screen. You'll click on it. And then you'll be able to choose between different font size, different screen sizes. And so you can go from the full desktop over to tablet mode and then over into full screen or over into mobile view. And when this responsive actually is working, you'll actually see the heading size change automatically. And so you can go back into this style and we're going to click on this little heading thing. We'll go back into typography and then you can change it over here. And let's see. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. I'll have to fix that later. 10 to 1, it's just a glitch, and I'm not even going to have to do anything. But this is just a good way to test out and see if you're how it's going to look. Yeah. Yeah. So the other way that you can start looking at this is if you look in the very upper right hand corner, this is actually the pixel screen size break that you can set manually if this actually starts to look weird. So if you if you click on this mobile and then you test on three or four different people's phones and you find out that the average mobile screen in your little group is different than the setting in here, you can manually change it. So you can change that width to like a little bit wider. You can change it to smaller. 
and this way you have just more fine-tuned control over what your website looks like on different screen sizes. And, and that's something that's, that's uh, I guess you got to go with what's the best you can get because phone sizes are so many different, so many different yeah. sizes now. Um, people have the big ones, uh, the note type ones, and now there's the fold yeah. one, folding ones that will have a whole different kind of view. And uh, yeah, <laughs> there is no standard. Yeah. So and, you're gonna have to be a little forgiving with it's the best we can do. Yeah. You know, yeah. And so as a general rule of thumb, if you're designing a website and the it's going to be geared toward a class or a group of people that you have that you know, then you can survey that class and you can find out the sizes of their own devices and design to the people that you know. But if it is going out to like the library commission, it goes out anywhere and everywhere. We have no idea. There's no way we could ever know. I usually just leave it in the default mode and design and pray. That's pretty much it. <laughs> it's all you can do. Yeah, you do the best yeah. you can. And so that's like nine times out of 10, you're probably not going to need to change it. But if you're working for school or for a small group, then it's super helpful. And so now I'm going to go back into that desktop layout. And I will ask if there is anything, if there are any like pressing design questions that anyone had, or if there's any like feature or function people wanted to see. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, before we do wrap up, it did um, just hit 11 a.m. Central Time, but that's okay. We started a little after 10, and we'll go as long as is needed for um, Amanda to show what she wants to, and um, if any of you have any questions. So if there was anything specific, anything specific you were hoping to see how to do here, uh, or anything that you're confused about, or you want to have her demo something, um, or show something again, or clarify something, Go ahead and type into the question section of your GoToWeb or interface. And um, we can answer any other questions or show anything else that people might want to see. And if you're unable to stick around while we're doing any other last minute things here after 11 o'clock, if you only allotted this one hour, that's fine. We're recording the show as we always do. And you can always watch the full recording um, later when it's available. Yep. Which should be by the end of the day tomorrow. And I'll also put in my email just in case people come up with things later on. I know a lot of times that does happen. Mm-hmm. And we do, I think, have... Yes, we do. Okay, good. And Krista, it looks like I only have the option to send out to panelists i don't think i can send to everyone so would you mind putting oh, my email yeah yeah. I, yeah um yeah it's amanda sweet at nebraska.gov which is all of our amanda dot sweet yeah which is all of our emails here um let's see. Eh. so yeah i'll send that out here um just so you all have that yeah. But also, um, I do have it linked um, if when you're on the session page for today's show, um, if you notice Amanda's name is a hot link, if you click on that, it goes to a, we have these uh, web form type things where you can email to anybody uh, on the commission staff, you get their particular link. So right from there, I also have that and that will go to her as well. Cool. And I just thought of like, 10 of the things that I could show you in WordPress, but there's always <laughs> going to be something. <laughs> yeah, so we can, yeah, yeah. And and as you said, you do do training um, for our libraries, Nebraska yeah. Libraries on the Web. Uh, and um, we could also do another Encompass Live on some specific aspect of WordPress that we might want to focus on too yep. in the future. Yeah. And what I generally recommend if you want to request like a custom training is to kind of look at your website, start making a list of the things that you want to be able to know and the things that you know you'll need to change out most frequently. And then once you have that list handy, then we can jump on the phone and I can kind of give you a 
demo and I'll also set up a set of um, custom tutorials. It's not tutorials that I will have made specifically all the time. Some of them I did, some of them I didn't. But if it's super generic, like you can usually find it on the web. And since I know the keyword terms to search for, then I can just pop them over to you or I can give you the keywords so that you can find it yourself. Yeah. Um, we do have a good a question, just came in, a very good one. And um, I think it's, it's something that comes up has been an, an, an ongoing question uh, since the internet started. Um, how do you know what pic what are free pictures? Ah, where do so, you how do you know if you're not using something? And this is something you better be do have to be very careful with. You do not want to use someone's picture that is copyrighted or um, uh, restricted in use. You want to make sure you're using something if you're not using your own photos that are from like the library or the other city. Um, where can you find things like that? So I just went to a website called Pixabay. Um, mm -hmm. Pixabay is, it's P-I-X-A-B-A-Y. And the reason I went to it is because they have a boatload of free images that are really high quality that you can pull from. Nine times out of 10 for any project that I do, I don't have to go beyond Pixabay. But the other thing that you want to look for is on this right hand side where it says Pixabay license, where it says free for commercial use, no attribution required. That is the golden nugget that you are looking for that says I can use this mm -hmm. anywhere and I don't have to do anything to do it. Yep. And so if you look at the Creative Commons licensing, there are different tiers of licensing. Some of them say you can use it for education purposes only. Some of them say that you can use it, but you have to give me attribution. And that's when you get those little blurbs on here that says source or um, image author, or however they want you to cite it. Mm -hmm. But this is the golden ticket. Free for commercial use, no attribution required. And then you don't have to worry about that. Um, yeah. Um, but if you do find a photo you want to use that has the different ones that says, you know, attribution, you know, we do, we do want you to like, you know, cite that you got this from this particular artist or something, then you yeah. can use those. You just got to make sure you follow whatever those um, license rules are that that, uh, that uh, artist has put onto their um, picture. Uh, but yeah. if you don't have to worry about that, then just yeah, make sure you limit it to that. And um, anything you see, it's out there for you to use freely. Yeah. And if you do find like an image through like Shutterstock or something that you, I guess Pixabay is promoting iStock now. Mm -hmm. But if you see something through iStock, Shutterstock, and you actually buy an image for like a buck or like two bucks or however much it is, then it's yours. You can use it right i mean you can do it and pay yes if you want to yeah um, yeah but, but, but you know, i mean if you look at pixabay they have like all the things and mm -hmm. ups like upsplash is the other one that i use mm -hmm. and upsplash also has the unsplash snippets Un nope that was a typo for me up splash there. Yeah. Did Upsplash change to Unsplash? No, it just, I don't know. It I just rerouted. Because I typed in Upsplash. Same results for Upsplash. Huh. Yeah. Well, whatever. It's Unsplash, Unsplash now. Yeah. <laughs> But it is freely usable images, and it's basically exactly like Pixabay. Mm -hmm. but I've used that one. I've used that one before too. Yeah. yeah. And were there any other questions that popped in? Uh, no, nothing right now. No. Um, anybody have any questions right now? You want to ask? Go ahead and type them in. Um. If not, you can always reach out to Amanda at any time, as she said. <laughs> also, this little dude is adorable. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've I've had problems. Okay, these are great websites for looking for photos, um, but you can get lost. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Where I ended just looking through so many of them and so many of and it's just like uh and especially since you can use Canva as like a meme maker now. 
it's a problem. Mm. I've memed so many frogs. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and at one at some point, I should actually just make a list of the different um, templates that work for Canva, but you can also make your custom size Canva image. And the custom size Canva image is actually what I recommend for the header image that goes up here and for a two column image, just so you know that you get the right size. But it is 11.09, so I guess if there are no other questions, I will wrap it out and yeah. we can call that a good. Yeah, awesome. Uh, yeah, this was great. Um, I learned a lot of things that I'm maybe using on some of the pages I work on, some of the sites I work on, some things I want to test out. I know I'm digging into some of those settings. Uh, so yeah, I think we will. Thank you so much. Thank you everybody for being here today. Um, if you do have any readers and thanks coming through, um, this program is very good. Thank you so much, Amanda. <laughs> so we do have thanks coming. Yeah. Uh, so uh, let's see where we are. Okay. I'm going to uh, pull presenter control back to my screen to wrap things up here. There we go. All right. So um, thank you, everybody. As I said, um, I put Amanda's email into the chat and, and everything, but here is where I was talking about. You can click on her name from here, and it brings you just to a nice web form that you can just go ahead and fill out if you want to. Um, or if you didn't want to get her email up here, you click here, and then you can copy and paste that into your own uh, email account if you want to get in touch with her. Uh, the pages we were talking about, pixabay.com, unsplash.com, are um, those are those two sites there. So uh, that will wrap it up for today's show. Um, as I said, we have recorded the show and it will be here in our archives. These are our upcoming shows. Um, it will be in our archives here at the top of the list. As I said, by the end of the day tomorrow, I should have everything ready. I will email everyone who attended today's show and registered for today's show, even if it didn't show up, to let you know. And then we'll push it out into our various social media. We do have a Facebook page for Encompass Live where we promote things about, here's our upcoming, here's the, this week's show reminder, uh, when our recordings are available, we post it up here. We also, on to Twitter and um Instagram. We have a hashtag and come live little abbreviation. So um, you'll see the announcements out there as well as well through, through our mailing lists. Um, this is our full show archives. I'd mentioned at the beginning of the show. Uh, we have lots and lots of topics. So if you wanted to search our show archives to see if we've done a show on a topic you are interested in, uh, you can do that. Uh, you can do the sh full archives or just the most recent 12 months if you want something just current. Uh, that is because this is our full show archives, and I'm not going to scroll all the way down. If you look over here, you'll see this this page is very is huge. Uh, this goes back to the when Encompass Live first premiered, which was January 2009. So we've got over 10, 12 years of shows here. So just pay attention to the original broadcast date of any shows that you watch. Some shows will stand the test of time and still be good, valid information, but some things will become old, outdated, um, services or resources might have changed drastically or have disappeared entirely. Uh, so um, just to pay attention if you are watching um, an old archive. Uh, Amanda will be back with us on, as I said, the last Wednesday of the month, September 28th for September Pre Sweet Tech. Do we have a, a show idea for that one yet? Put me on the spot here. You don't have to, but yeah. <laughs> um, or we'll see what that will topic will be. I have a few ideas, but I think this one I'll actually reach out to a couple people and see if they might be able to jump on. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. So yeah, keep your eyes open on our schedule to see what her next topic will be um, at the end of September. Uh, but next week's, oh, and I'll also mention here, um, while we're looking at the schedule here, we do not have, we will be off on the week of October 5th. That is our state annual conference. And I always, we always take that week off of the show. Everyone's involved in the conference instead. So um, there will be no Encompass Live on October 5th because it is our, our Nebraska Library Association annual conference. And, and next week we'll talk about retirement. 
time to ease on down, ease on down the road. Robin Newell, who used to be at a library in Nebraska, is now the executive director of the Emporia Public Library in Kansas. And she's gonna talk about um, how to plan for your retirement, if that's something um, you are on that end of your library career. So please do sign up for that show and any of the other ones we have coming up over September. I'm getting my October dates scheduled in here too. So um, keep an eye on the schedule too to see uh, what new shows come up for later in October. Okay. And that, thank you everybody for being here. Thank you, Amanda. Uh, we'll see you in a month <laughs> on the show in a month. Sweet. Um, <laughs> see some of you uh, on our next episodes of Encompass Live. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.